Go ahead. So as Linda mentioned, if you can tip your microphones forward just so she can hear with the maps and also if we have a little upgrade to our sound system, our server has been changed out. So thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. First item on our agenda this evening is review and approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. If anybody has any additional thoughts or corrections, if you'd be kind enough to share them with Linda. Otherwise, I would look for a motion to approve, please. I just had a question about the uh, the storage is on the north side of the current building. Is that right? South side. My understanding would be on the south side. Oh, yes. Yeah. South, south side. We can get that adjusted. Other than that, I'd, I'd make a motion to approve <coughs> with, the, uh, with the change for the note that south side is better north side. Uh, we have a motion with a correction. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, got the minutes taken care of. Next item this evening, public hearing standard conditional use permit. So including your packet, I have a, a memo that covers a number of the items that we're talking about tonight. I just put them all into one. Um, so I, we did include a lot of information from when this uh, CUP was previously issued a couple of years ago. So you can see maps of the original plans and things like that. Um, additionally, you can see the resolution that, uh, that we've generated that we would anticipate utilizing as city council uh, for if, if they chose to, uh, you know, if we chose a, a positive recommendation, if we chose to forward that to them. You can see the items that would be included, and along those lines are what we had uh, talked about last uh, month, some of those items. Um, and I did, as I highlighted with Chairman, um, we did have a few issues in getting actual copies of the plans and things that we would like to have seen. Uh, for example, the, the parking plan. Um, I know that, uh, I, I don't expect it necessarily to be a overly complicated one, just sort of a laying out of the parking, and it's possible that Mr. Standard will come and, and have those items for us now. To, but um, so you have all those items included in your packet. Um, other than that, comments, the biggest one that I saw was this dust proof condition, which um, does seem to be something that we would probably want to define a little bit more intensively before we would approve anything at that time. Here, uh, with all that said, I'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. If anybody has anything they would like to share on the matter, uh, if you'd be kind enough to come up to the podium, give us your name and address, please. As far as on my end of things with the lot, uh, no, sir. This is Mr. Standard's uh, oh, additional use permit for the uh, storage yeah. on the. Must be a lip reader. When I just have a hard time. <laughs> no, I don't do a good job of screaming either. So I'll oh, oh, okay. see when you're up. Okay. Oh, okay. Don't okay. worry. Okay. okay. <laughs> Assuming that's not why you gentlemen came this evening, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. We don't have everything we need really to. No, I mean, I, as I said, I mean, I think. You know, I guess the only other thing I could say is, you know, do those, if you look on those pages that have got the resolution, I mean, it fairly clearly talks about what I would expect the council to, uh, would the council would want. Um, you know, are there any, is there anything else that you are looking for in terms of the, the qualifications? And then if, if there is, then we'll add those in. And if there's not, then as I said, I think defining those maybe a little bit more uh, thoroughly would be beneficial for us and for the applicant just because uh, I want him to know exactly what he needs to do. Okay. You know, otherwise we're just creating a problem a couple of years down the road again. So. so we want to start with our dust proof condition and try to hash that out a little bit better, clarify that a little bit. I think better. that's what probably the way to go. I did just email out um, one simple definition of dust proof. <coughs> yeah, I saw um, that, and if you, it's all right, I'll read it too here. And this is just, this is my, my understanding of when I used dust proof in the past. Um, it refers to uh, if an application of a thin layer of asphalt oil uh, followed by a layer of small rock which provides a new wear surface on a road. Dust proofing protects uh, applications of asphalt from becoming porous. 
um, maintenance help expense life of pavement it goes whose cost in this case you know we may not require him to seal coat that but that is the one definition that I think of when I think of you know because it really will reduce the you know by putting that oil down it's going to reduce the dust quite a bit so I mean there are other things for example I know what they use on township roads you know the the, the, the chemicals right. they use right. you know if he would commit to even doing that every year you know something like that probably would certainly improve what we're looking at I mean and I, I'd be open to something that obviously that's going to be more cost effective than yeah. so well I guess I look at this and whatever he would want to do is almost kind of a temporary fix here until he continues building out his, his buildings on this piece of land right so I, I guess I could give you guidance for the fall to the land what would be a viable temporary way of, of managing the dust on the site Yes, really. I think I would say in my probably think this too. Uh, you know, if you were to put down some type of a pea gravel in the oil, I think it's going to get tore up easy. Just the turning. The weight of the items, sure. Mm -hmm. Plowing. And mm -hmm. Yeah, the weight. I think I would, like Dwayne, I would be more in, into that than, than on the asphalt. Type okay. Stuff. So this is just bare dirt as it sits down, right? I mean, there's just right. nothing there. Probably some yeah. gravel, but not much. Yeah. There's gravel where the buildings are at. But right. Not. You would think he would want to clear off the black dirt and put a base down so when he is ready to build his other buildings, it isn't like he has to take this all out to start over again. So I would think he would want a substantial base in there. That would make sense, right? I mean, you know, that's what I would do. Well. But, but if he's trying to do it as cheap as possible, he's just going to bring in some truckloads of gravel and right. be done. And that's kind of what I'm afraid that's going to happen. If he doesn't take the black, doesn't put down a good base, even for parking, it's going to get to be Muck. a shithole. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. seriously. <laughs> We're putting that in the minutes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I don't want to expand Linda's vocabulary too much. <laughs> I guess the question I have is he he didn't he didn't finish with his conditional use permit already and yes he's in asking to change it but it sure seems like the burden is on the city to make sure that somebody's doing something versus them coming because he should have come in and said I am not going I'm not building out my units as fast can I have an extension of my conditional use permit right. and he didn't do that he came in and kind of said well gee that's not going I need something else now. And I'm just worried that, you know, whatever. You think that sets a bad precedent? Yeah. Well, I mean, on, on the light of things that I've been involved with since my short time on the Planning Commission, sure. it's the burden of conditional use should be on the on the tenant, not the city. Well, I mean, as I was telling, you know, Tom, I mean, that, that's been, I was trying to get these items from him even, has been right. a burden on, you know, Linda's right. time, basically, where I'm saying, Linda, go email him and try and dig out these items because he's right. just not bringing them. So, right. no, I, I share that concern for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, to me, it's almost uh, he can have a one-year extension know, or something. One-year cool. application, and he, you know, he has to come in next year, and if not, there's a fine or some, you know. That's the tough part about the conditional yeah. use permit, is I right. guess putting that timeline on it too. But he's asking for a unique situation and what he yeah. had already asked for. Right. You know. Well, I think Mother Nature's going to have a bit of an impact on his time frame. I mean, trying to capture mm -hmm. the benefit of people looking to park their RVs for the winter time. You've yeah. got two months. Yeah, yeah. Where, where he's in a position to capture that opportunity. So. But you could come back and say, well, put all your pads in and finish your parking lot out. We're not, you're not building all the buildings, but... Well, right. You I mean, know, if I mean, it was Rochester or the city in the metro, that's probably what they right. say. They right. just say, we well, don't really care. You know, this is what you said you were going to build. Right. Either right. build it or we're going to deny the whole thing. Right. I mean, right. I, you know... I don't want to go there. I don't either, but right. it's the... You know, th this is going to rear its head again yeah. in some fashion, and you know, we already have enough people running around trying to find out who's not following their conditional use permits. Well, we don't have to give this to them. No, no. So that's something to always think about too. No, but, but I'd like to because I understand his dilemma. Well, sure. I He's it. trying to generate revenue so he can build more buildings. Right. You know, I mean, it's kind of this catch-22. Sure. But he didn't realize what his original commitment was. I guess that's the part that I'm I'm worried about. You yeah. know. If I could make a <coughs> suggestion or something, um, 
since I was emailing Mr. Standard today, and I'm not sure that the notice, it went to Captain Storage at the address on the tax statement. But when I look at that address and his address from the meeting before, it's not the same. So I don't know if he has a partner that didn't let him know the meeting was tonight, and I'm not sure is he... It, is it a terrible address? Yeah. That's the one my daughter rented, and that's the one where all the payments went to. Yeah, that's what's on the tax statement. And I think is it I is a partner. Yeah, so I'm not sure. You know, if you want, you've held the public hearing, so you've done that. You can table it until next yeah. month. Yeah, right. He was at the last meeting. He and knew he was this at the was going to be coming yeah. up, so. Well, you know, email him. So. Yeah. He's got to assume some responsibility, so. I, I think that there's two things we can do. One is address this dust proof, and then two, table this until he gets on everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can go any further now. We don't right. have enough information to do that. But. Okay. Makes sense to me. All right, so dust proof. <laughs> Back to that. Colin, your thoughts? Well, uh, I think kind of, so I think kind of in agreement with what has already, already been said here tonight. Choice of inch and a half sewer rack or road rack with chloride. And do we need to go any further than that? I mean, do we need to specify we depth? Do we need to specify that he turns in receipts that he has actually yeah. put chloride on? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, as, as far as we don't require the the other two businesses that are on that road. Dust proof their gravel parking lots. But that was a part of his conditional use to put in a storage facility. Less, less must have put in a, a permittable use, which allowed for a blacktop parking lot or for a gravel parking lot. Imagine the dust control is for the other storage containers that people got people. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that. But yeah. Do we accept either option and or recommendation from the owner? But these things need to be defined before we issue a condition of use. I myself would like to see his actual plan, what he's going to do. What what he's going to do for proper screening. What he's going to do for a parking plan. What he's going to do for proper surfacing. Get that to us, then we tweak it to our liking. Sure. And then do you approve this? And if he doesn't, I guess we deny it. Yeah. I, I think in our discussion last month, I think we indicated to him, you know, a recommendation <coughs> as to what the dust proofing could consist of. Yeah. So it's up to him to take it from there. Yeah, exactly. He's got to figure something out, and once he does, let us know. I, mean, I, yeah. know. I don't know if that's being more complicated than it's almost like he figured out that maybe this isn't going to work. Yeah. Just left it hanging. <coughs> or maybe the opportunity to park our bees there wasn't what it needed to be. I have no idea. I'm going to speculate. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, you got to put a fence up. Yeah. A, fence, a fence costs money that you're not going to be able to use in the long term. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that uh, it makes sense to kind of specify the performance of, of what needs to be achieved, but then the methods to get there can be up to him. You know, yep. There's different ways to do a, a dust proof for a parking area. <coughs> but, uh, we don't need to specify a particular method. But I do believe dust proofing leaves it open to interpretation. I mean, what I'm hearing is there's maybe two options there that we might have. You know, and so that's okay, you know, if you can bring in one of those two or yeah. mm -hmm. say that, and I mean, that's the you know, as you said before, like, so Linda emailed him and she, you know, she seated me on it specifically, like, these are the four things you need to bring in. We didn't get any of them. So I mean, we will, we can do that again. That's what we'll do. You know, let's say, hey, we need you to, you know, these are the four things that they wanted. Again, we need to bring those in or this isn't going to proceed. 
because otherwise I don't want to waste your guys' time on this any more than we have to. I mean, some of the other things, you know, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Grading, site plan, lighting plan, parking yep. plan, you know, it, it's, and he can give us what he's going to do for dust proof and, and screening. Yep. I mean, and there you go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Linda, it sounds like that's the direction the board wants to take. So we're going to follow up with an email tomorrow and uh, let him know what no one's, but I mean, after that, I'm not going to chase his tail. Cause no. that's, it's on him, not on us. So. Right. Okay. So I'll move the table. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? We've got a motion in a second, but anybody else have any? Okay. A motion in a second to table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Who seconded it? Aye. Aye. Paul Barron did? Okay. Thank you. Good. <coughs> Can't relapse. <laughs> I'm smiling. <laughs> um, next up, public hearing for minor subdivision request by Brad Clemens Plaza 57 to split off some land. So you've got that on my memo under number four. Um, it's just a update that uh, Mr. Clemens is requesting is working with Mr. Carlson to split off some property, which will be now known as the we now know it's a plot of 57 property. Um, after reviewing this, this should allow for proper water distribution, and it's going to allow for the full use of Mr. Carlson's property. So we're we're recommending approval of the minor subdivision to allow for that property to be sold. So this eliminates that strip, correct? Well, that that strip will uh, let me put my my drainage in it, right, and just slow the water down, right. So that's. My other option was uh, years ago was to put in a system, you know, under my parking lot, and it, it just yep. more maintenance. This way, it's going to be, I don't know, just kind of like a, a rain garden type thing, and then I got a bore underneath the driveway, right? Like a six this, pipe. This is what we talked about originally, yeah. right. but she wouldn't go for it, correct? Yep. Pardon? This right. is what we talked about originally, but she wouldn't go for boring underneath the driveway. Well, it all started back, you know, when I went to Green Bay with uh, Shopco. Um, they didn't want me to build two buildings there. They thought it would block their view. So they were against it. And uh, so my other option was to, you know, put something under the parking lot or, or do something. Mm -hmm. I had to do something, I guess. So, you know, I've been, then I worked with the, the owners out east, and then they uh, let it go, and then I talked to the bank, and then they sold it to a syndicated auction company or whatever. And I'd know Brad a little bit, so I went and talked to him, and you know, he thought, you know, 35 feet, you know, you can't really build anything on it. And I explained to him, and it sounds like he's ran into that before, where he's had to contain some water, and so he's willing to sell me the lot. And Basically, all we're doing is just creating another parcel. Right. So yep. if it was already right. a parcel, he would have just been able to sell it. Because yep. in this case, because it isn't a separate parcel, we're just going to create that new PID number. The county's going to, it'll be just a small parcel. And then, you know, Mr. Cross will be acquiring that for his water. Yep. So uh, as I said, we didn't have any, in fact, it, it helps alleviate some of the concerns that I've had about drainage yep. on the main road there. And I know yep. Brandon's had some of those same concerns too, city engineers. So I think this would be a win-win, really. Yep. yep. I, do. I agree. I did get a the okay from MnDOT and uh, the DNR, and, and I know uh, Les down here uh, ran it by Brandon, and Brandon said, "Yeah, as long as they're okay with it, we're we're fine." So, yep. out of the way, I will go ahead and open up the public hearing. Uh, if anyone has anything they'd like to share on the matter, if they'd be kind enough to come up to the podium, please. I, I guess did anybody call in or write in or? Um, Any in objections from anybody, Linda? Oh, okay. So get your name and address oh. before you begin, or do you have it? Ron Carlson, 616-98-257th Avenue, Manterville. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we don't have any correspondence? I don't believe so, no. Okay. Gentlemen, your thoughts? I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. It's a smart thing to do. Yep, it's, what we want, it's what we wanted to do in the first place. <laughs> it's what we should make 
Right, it squirmed just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only the only issue that I know that did come up with that parking lot was I think originally in the plan that you approved it was a roll of a curb, and it was not the, the hard My curb. That they, I know it was not the hard curb that they put in, but at the same time I think this will help alleviate that too yep, because yeah. they'll still be able to drain then and it'll help fix that. So. Yep. <coughs> There are no additional comments or questions. I would look for a motion, please. I move to approve. I'm going to abstain. Just so we can okay. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second that. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And we have one abstention? Yes. And just for the record, Linda, that motion would be to approve the minor subdivision, um, which will forward that to the, the city council for approval. It was Joe that seconded it. Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. So I, I, Linda, when does this go to the council then? They've got the final say. The 26th? Is that the next meeting? The it would be. 26th? Yeah. Is that the fourth the, the Wednesday? The next city council meeting. That's yes. And that would be on that, Linda? Yep. That will be on the agenda for that meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Yep. Next up, potential revocation of images, variance, no work performed, and variance not filed. So as part of the process that uh, we've been trying to undergo is cleaning up some of these uh, UPs and variances that haven't been maintained or followed up as much. Uh, Linda alerted me to one that was approved back in uh, 2017, which it was quite a uh, quite a divisive one at the time. Apparently, in fact, I think the planning commission actually had had denied this, um, and the city council chose to, to overrule it, which is their prerogative, of course. But um, I read through the packet and the information, and um, in essence, for this building, I guess they had asked for a variance to uh, be able to grow the business, which of course makes sense. We want businesses to grow and have that ability to do so. Um, but it seems that nothing, no, none of the work's been done. The business is obviously um, in a different position than it was at the time. So Linda had asked me to bring it to you to take a look and see whether you thought it would be appropriate to uh, to revoke the variance. Having it, you know, we typically do ask people to commence the work of a project within a certain time period. Um, in different cities are different, a year, 18 months, something like that. Um, having not seen any work for two years, I know her concern was that a new owner might not be apprised of this or might, you know, there might be an issue then, so that this was outstanding. Right, that it was outstanding. So we've got more than this one variant out there though that hasn't been acted on. Oh sure. Um, sure. I mean, is the thought process to go start with the most recent variances that haven't been acted on and work our way back four, five, six, seven years? Is it something over the? Is that what you'd like to do? <laughs> I guess I'm trying to understand what the process is that has been started before I Well, my, my process is that when some things brought to my attention, I try to bring it to the board as soon as possible. Okay. Because I obviously don't know, you know, all the variances that have or haven't yep. been acted on. <coughs> and unfortunately, I don't have as much time as I'd like to get out and take a look at some of these sites. Sure. Um, today, I got to drive around and do the, the lawn sign inspection uh, program. Probably for the next two months, I'll be doing that. But it's a nice day, so I didn't mind at all. It's <laughs> kind of fun. But, um, but yeah, I think that makes sense is to go and uh, start running through. And I know Linda's got a lot of the records and we want to make sure we have thorough records too. That's the other thing that we really are stressing is trying to have good records. Um, the solution to this is also going to be that our plan going forward is to change the fee schedule as Brad recommended and we talked about it at our previous planning commission so that when COPs and variances come in, you know, we are the ones that are actually going to make sure those get filed. So, you know, we'll be adding that fee, 4650 or whatever it is, or maybe it'll be a little higher because we have to account for time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Linda's time or my time, or whoever goes up to the county, you know, that way we know that it took, because part of it is that some of these aren't even getting filed. So the planning commission, you know, has a forward recommendation of the council, council approves it. You know, it sits, we had one, which one was that Linda, where it, it sat for like three years. Was that this one? That was this one. Sure, so this one, basically you guys approved it and it sat for a period of time and it never, it never really got filed. So now we're kind of like, well, what is the status of this now? I don't want a new owner to be confused and say, oh, I think I got a variance, but I don't know. And 
we ran into that with, uh, with the city council's dealing with one right now with the home purchase that they mm -hmm. kind of made a change for it, which we discussed too at, at the planning commission. So, yep. yeah, I think that would be a that would be a fine plan. We start going through and just mm -hmm. reviewing and. I, I guess, and I'd like everybody's feedback. You know, we kind of we kind of have to go through everything. I don't think you can just do a one-off and 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 you know the perception I think is you're kind of picking on somebody for doing that. Sure. And, and I guess starting the conversation here, but if it's possible to contact the person that applied for the variance and say, hey, what's going on here? The, the thoughts of the city are we go ahead and. It has been sent to him, and oh, okay. it was sent to the bank that owns the building. Okay. I received the one that was sent to the person back, and I have no comments from the bank. You won't, okay. you won't get in contact with them. So, so curious question. I mean, when we pass a variance, there's no, there's no time limit on it, and ultimately, if this would have been in the new process, it would have been recorded. And then been a permanent variance on the property. That's right. And is there we'll is there a is 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 that the right thing to be doing, or is it that you're giving it a timeline and then eventually either recording it or not recording it? Yeah, I mean, I guess with var with variances, and that's why they're a little bit different from the CUPs, is that variance goes with the property. So once it's granted and and it's filed, you know, it's it's with that property forever, you know, until you know something changes dramatically. You know, in this case, if they had a if they had filed it, I don't think we would have any recourse. So I think that's, okay. and that's maybe to your question. We won't have to go through every single variance, but the what I'll end up doing is we'll get a list of all of them, and you know, Linda or I can go and we can go to the county and say, this one gets filed, this one gets, you know, and we'll go down and we'll try and clean up the ones that haven't gotten got filed that are sitting there someplace. You know, if that makes sense, and it's sure. going to cut down on that number dramatically. So you're right. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. Sure. This one just popped up because. I don't. What what did precipitate this, Linda? Do you remember? Oh, because the for sale sign in the window with the auction. Oh sure. No. She and was concerned the building was going to. I was concerned the building <coughs> was going to be sold. I checked to see if it had been filed. It never had. So I suggested that we should no. probably take a look at um, it. Revoke this before whatever comes in there, and then all of a sudden they can build the five feet within the property line, and you don't know if you want to do that with yeah. whatever business comes in. No, no clue what they do with it. So. I get it. Yeah, as long as we've got a process in place, you know. Sure. What? Nothing. You sure? Well, I mean, we don't have to take any action on tonight. No, I'm just. We just we brought should. this up to no, you. I, I, think, yeah. I, think, I, think, we I think we should. I think we should. Yeah. I think we should because I'm the one that really pushed for this variance. So, I, I understand what happened to the owner, um, and his plans that he did have, and what happened. To for him to pull out, um, he had a good plan. He has good intentions, but it just didn't work. And we should have been keeping track of this, like you said. There should be a time limit on these variances. If you don't do anything with a certain amount of time, either come in to have it renewed, or else it's gone. And I guess that's my question: is is what I'm hearing we're suggesting is saying if a variance goes through. We'll go file at the county and it's done. Now that variance goes with that property all the time, which I don't think is a bad idea, but then why aren't we saying, you know, telling somebody that, hey, you, this is either going to be vacated or the, the variance is going to be om omitted or whatever proper yeah, word, sure. or there will be a fee because it will be recorded and this will be put on the tax roll. Yeah, no, I think that was part of it. I mean, Linda yeah. attempted to contact the property owner. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ideally, what would have happened is they would have come in here tonight and yeah. they would have said, hey, yeah, I've had these issues, but I plan on getting it filed and I still plan on doing this. Right. So you're right. absolutely correct. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we don't want to be willy-nilly about it. No. And that's why we do the, the open session so that everybody yeah. can say what yep. they feel about it. And yeah. I would love it if they told me, hey, I plan on doing it and here's what we're going to do. Because, I mean, you know, to Kalani's point, I want to support the businesses as much as I can. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a limited amount of good space in town here for commercial and yeah. for, you know, that kind of thing. Anything additional? No? no. With that said, I would look for a motion, please. Or do we even have to go through that process? Do we, do we just... Well, I mean, your, your motion would be to recommend to the city council okay. one way or the other. In this case, your motion would be to uh, to revoke that based on the 
um, non-completion and non-filing of the project. I'll make the motion to revoke, revoke the variance for images. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Oh. Right. Yeah. I, I abstained when it went through. Yep. Keeping the same format, I think. <laughs> Understood. Uh, next up this evening, potential annexation request for Canton Meadows 7. And this is informational, so the annexation will go to the City Council, um, but I do like to try and get the planning and zoning board in line, partly because um, I'm very sensitive to the, the, the road situation, which we've run into before. When these subdivisions start coming in, we want to make sure there's proper entrances and exits to to all these you know divisions. So um, basically, this is a very small piece of pie. Um, so that will get included in here. Yeah, there it is. So you do have a copy of that petition of annexation, um, which is reasonably straightforward because the property owner is the one that submitted that. So it, it doesn't require a, a, a lot of rigmarole. He's the one asking, and he owns 100% of the property. My biggest um, issue with this, and I don't know, kind of look up here. Basically, what they're doing is they're bringing in the, the bottom southern, maybe third of this parcel right here. And now, when I talk to them, I talk to Les Conway because that's you know Matthew's engineer for this one. Um, I recommended to them that they bring the whole parcel in now because I just felt like it would make more sense and it's, you know, one hearing instead of three or two, you know, they're really going to save money in the long run. And the tax difference on the property is, you know, it's maybe $2 a year because it would still be farmland in the city. It just would be tiny, you know, tiny bit different. There are also some other structural issues because of the way the stormwater worked here. Apparently, <laughs> I am not Brandon, but, you know, stormwater on one side starts going one way and the other side it goes the other way. So by extending this, and just putting three homes in, it seems kind of a short-sighted step, in my opinion, for the overall grand scheme of things. But um, I just wanted to bring it to you because I want you to be aware of what was going on. We have an issue up there where we're going to have to find ways for folks in that subdivision to get out. Um, you know, right now there's only one entrance and exit in. It's a road that's in very poor condition. That's very possibly going to be our street project next year. Um, which will mean that Dwayne's going to have a lot of fun when they come through his neighborhood. They're going to be driving down the bike path. Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a good chance that that's a possibility. And I know the schools, op, you know, had some opposition. They don't really want us cutting through there, which I guess I understand at the same time. It does need to come up somewhere. Mm -hmm. The other issue would be extending it up here. You know, you're going to have some pushback from the township folks up here. But in the fullness of time, this substandard road really is not sufficient to, you know, have this many houses. It just doesn't work. You know, obviously that that turn that, that that speed that turn is you know a car accident. You know there there's a possibility that you could you know connect in here, but that's always going to have to be a secondary. I mean that yeah, is like yeah. an emergency access basically because of the grade. Yeah, that is. Um, so I mean that that would that, you know that might be something where you maybe very temporarily you could do that, but in the fullness of time, you know, bringing it out over here and bringing it connecting into the north makes the most sense to me. You know, if we can deal with the school, I mean, we're going to have to, but. Uh, I just wanted you to know that, you know, this is not ideal for me situation. And so my recommendation would be to advise them to bring the entire parcel in uh, because we don't have to accept the petition. Don't you we know? have a transportation map somewhere that identifies potential road? There are several connecting to yeah, 57. There's, there's several different iterations of that. And because of different opposition from the school or from the township, there has been different pushback on it. But, yeah. Well. yeah. I think if that's what they want, but what we need is <laughs> two different things. Right. Wasn't the last one just north of that property, north of the church? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's what Brandon was looking at, um, trying to slide it in there and kind of, you know, maybe it'd almost be like a street going into a parking lot and then going out kind of on the other side, kind of like the school has right now. But uh, I don't know. I just wanted you to know because I do think it's important. I, I need your feedback always because, you know, you guys have lived here a lot longer and you know what those have been. You know, but I, I think we should be aware that that's, that's going to need to come out somewhere. Otherwise, you're just going to have a, a real mess up there. Um, and as it keeps growing on that side, it's not going to get any easier. <coughs> Why do we anticipate opposition from the township for north?
Well, I don't necessarily have, a, I don't expect it from them so much as from the developer. I think that he's, what I've been told, he'd like to cul-de-sac that off. I'm sure it's a cost thing, probably, um, but. That isn't a general development plan from the original. Right. The, which one, the north one? Yeah, the north one. Yeah. We, we haven't vacated the uh, Maston Parkway, that extension of that road, have we? No, but it's narrow. Right. If I remember right. So this was supposed to go up long through here. Yeah, right. all the way straight up, yeah. yeah was it, so it was like a summer we still had it through the right. It didn't happen. They gave back some of this property to here. And this is supposed to go up into the yep. 270th or something. Is that yeah, right? yeah. And there was a big fight about that. And then the, <coughs> the neighborhood up there was not going to put a fence up there. But there's access there. Yeah, yep, there is. That was the original. That was the original plan that I remember. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, that road is. Well, yeah, I mean, they, we spent, I don't know, I think it was close to $10,000 just patching it this year. You know, and for that kind of money, you know, that's a chunk of a rebuild. So, I mean, we have looked at um, options, too. I mean, some of that cost could be assessed to that neighborhood, which would make sense because they're the users. Um, you know, that would mean that it would, it would cost the city a little bit less cash overall. And it's not going to cost a lot. I mean, I don't know. We were trying to figure out exactly how many houses we've got up there, but... You know, if you've got 100 houses, you've got a $150,000 project or $200,000 project, and you're only assessing a third of that to the, you know, $50,000, you know, you're not looking at a ton of money per household, you know, and for a lot of folks up there, I think they'd probably rather have the, the good road. The other issue that we have is the pond. So that pond was never built really properly either. It's a shallow pond. It's already filled in even more than it was. So we'd like to upsize that pond because, you know, we know there's a lot of water issues up there too. Uh, you know, the school is, is, a, is a good partner for a lot of things, but they don't necessarily want to work on, they've got a pond a little further to the west on their property that really isn't quite up to standard either. But, uh, and, you know, we'll work with them. You know, I think if we paid to fix it, they'd probably let us pay it fix it. But uh, other than that, uh, we know that we need to get our ponds in, in order, and we're going to start trying to budget for one pond a year just to, to bring them up to, you know, to dredge them and bring them up to grade. We don't really have the equipment. We have to hire somebody to do it. But uh, you know, right now we have some of the ponds. They're just not. They're not functioning the way they should. So I mean, we own enough property there that we'd be able to soften that curve. I think probably by 30 or 40 percent, which would be great too. It'd be safer. So. Yeah, I think you could almost argue with the size of that area, potential development, that both the 57 and the north connection are wanted. Well, and I mean, part of it for me, and, and if, if they're expecting to bring a, any, I mean, this is three three lots, but at a point we have to sort of say, you know, if you're going to be building a larger number of lots, you know, we have to have those connections. Yep. At that point, like, it's not going to necessarily be up to me, but I would almost say we're not going to give you a building permit until you show us how you're going to do this, because otherwise we run into what we're running into, you know, with some of our other developers where we've kind of punted on it again and again and again and just let them build and... You know, and I don't mean to penalize anybody. It just makes sense that we'd have another route out. You know, if you add another 50 houses up there, I, how do you make how do you make that work? Well, in our in a previous conversation we had with Laura, we talked about getting a transportation plan included in our comp plan. Sure. So I think that that's what drives it. Mm -hmm. I I would say that if you're asking him to annex the prop the rest of the property in that you're entitling him to build on that property without any future exits. I think if you allow him to bring in the three lots that he wants right now, because I know that's all the sewer can handle, and the rest of the sewer all goes the other direction, right. that then and now you've got a little bit more leverage that you can say, hey, we'll, we'll recommend this, and let's put in the three lots, but until, until somebody comes with another way out, you're not going to be able to annex the rest of the well, I could certainly see that. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm not trying to stop it, but I do think no. it's one of those ones yeah. where, in the past, you know, sometimes we let things go, and I mean, you just have to, you know, we don't have to always let people build. And we've got no. another hundred lots coming on in different parts of town next year. This, 
this isn't critical from the city's perspective. Right. Obviously, for this property owner, it is, and I, I respect that. So. Any other feedback? Okay. Well, I hope you don't mind. I do. I do like kind of you know, get your guys' feedback on these because I do. I want you to know where we're going with things. I just think it's, it's valuable to me. So we do have this annexation that will be going to council. And then, um, I mean, I'm expecting to bring the Z in the, the school one later this fall. Right now, the timeline that I've been told is about 18 months on um, the, the new alternative learning center. But of course, that can change. That can shift. You know, who knows? Maybe Pine Island will change their mind and want to get back into it. So, OK. Zoning ordinance rewrite. All right, so you've got my memo notes there. Uh, I thought it was really good last time we had a good conversation, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, Brad, is, uh, uh, Mr. Scheib's got a lot of the, the notes that you've got. He, he's creating new overlays, and we did include in your packet, I think, the one that was not included last time. Um, so that is that major priority change area. And the, the ones that were noted at the last meeting um, that were particularly effective are along that 34 corridor, and then um, along the uh, the north, sort of north, straight north section there, the trucking business. Um, and I know I just wanted this to be, you know, brought to you up, you know, next month we're expecting to have a public hearing for this. So that will allow us to start uh, getting ready to finalize it. Just wanted to make sure you've got a list of those changes that were included there. Um, we had some conversation the last time about doing, what are we doing with those, um, you know, a couple of properties that will be know affected dramatically by this and uh, the feedback that I've gotten has been that um, for right now we would look to allow that zoning that they have to currently continue but if that's not what the Planning Commission is interested I mean some members have expressed that to me but uh, you know I, I, I think that um, in some ways it would make sense to allow this, this stuff to happen naturally when people change business but um, we don't have to <laughs> City yet that potentially could be an extension on um, North 57 connecting the uh, Dollar General and the trucking company. Sure. All this could end up being general commercial. Right. And it's very possible that it could come in at a certain level, and that, that's why I said it may, maybe it wouldn't be absolutely necessary at this time to switch that because we don't know what the final use will be. I mean, one thing we are looking at doing, I know the EDA is. Um, looking very hard at the property the city has on the southwest side of town because they'd like to perhaps encourage some of these businesses to look at alternative locations on the periphery that might fit their business needs a little bit better than you know where they're going to see some core growth um, but that obviously takes money to build a you know a commercial park or something like that you know some lots where somebody could shift their business we'd have to help uh, help them with that but uh, I know that they're they're definitely talking about that now which is great it's going to be an interesting day when all those letters go in the mail. Right. <coughs> Anything else, Shepman? Any other direction on those particular properties? And as I said, you know, we've identified a couple of them that in particular would be a right. affected. I mean, we, we control this process, so you know, Brad can make a recommendation. It doesn't mean we necessarily have to say that's what we're going to do, you know, especially if we know it's going to have a real impact on actual <coughs> residents and home, you know, homeowners and business people in town. So I don't think I feel comfortable with maintaining the current uh, use of the structures. Yeah, I, I think know. that you can. It, a lot of it just depends on how you classify things. You know, if, for example, like we had a hard time identifying that one on the north side of town. To me, it's a logistics business. Or a trucking, you know, it's a, it's a distribution business. Now it may not be that he's loading things at that site, but I think if you clarify it that way, then it fits the use. It's just a matter of we're not going to clarify it that way, then we got to figure out how are we going to clarify it, and that, that's where the difficulty becomes. But I haven't had any complaints from anyone about it, and it's been there for a long time. So, 
Yeah, I guess trying to force a rezone on somebody for any reason. I, mean, I guess I would have a little bit of a hard run with that. Sure. You know, in many ways, we're kind of here to prevent that from happening. You know, I don't well, see the biggest issue for me is when I don't have any other options for them, really. Yeah. You know, if I had a better option for them and I said, hey, we've got these, you know, five acre lots available in this commercial park on the southwest side of town where you're going to have better access to the highway anyways, you know, hopefully they would be encouraged to, you know, consider that. The other thing that we don't know yet, Dwayne mentioned, we don't know what the use is going to be around them yet. You know, we, we expect certain things, but we don't know. And once, I mean, if it was encircled by residential, I think they have a very strong case to say, hey, yeah. you know, it's time to make that, that switch, you know. Well, we still got the comprehensive plan to, to guide sure. any decisions, you know, if there is a change of ownership out there or change of usage right. for the comp plan. So we always have that to fall back on. Right. Any other comments? Anything else for us to discuss this evening, sir? No, I just want to highlight, so right now, I think we're expecting that zoning rewrite public hearing in September. Um, there are a number of subdivisions that are going to be coming up, too. We have a big old void um, that's going to be coming to the city council. We also have uh, uh, Meadowbrook, which is likely to come to the council this uh, fall. We'll see what the process looks like on that. They're asking for an expedited um, kind of process because I think they had gone through the, they had already gone through this process to a large degree at the previous time. Um, also, let you know that there's a, there's a chance I probably won't be at the next planning commission meeting. Uh, I am getting married, and uh, we're going to do a honeymoon. So, anyway, so Linda will be in charge. So you know, we can. Uh, oh, no. I'll, we'll have like five public hearings that night, you know, and I'll come back and I'll just be like, oh, I don't know what they did. But uh, anyway, um, I think we're doing really well, and we're going to do a good try and get caught up on these variances well, with CUPs this fall. So not, not to be terribly nosy, but where's your honeymoon? Uh, well, we'll see. Right now, it's looking like Dominican Republic. I, I told her, I said, are you I, sure you want to do that? I, I, she I said, she I, said, let's try it anyways. Yes. There's, there's always uh, Wasio here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful part of the world. I've only been there once. But I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't have the planning and zoning meeting down. Would you like to do that? Okay. Okay. Well, I can maybe zoom in or something <laughs> like that. No, I don't know. No. I mean, from the beach, I can, you know. Mm -hmm. We can't exactly drive down. But I, well, I think we it is there. in the same time zone, so it That's does true. work very well. Let's do a destination yeah. wedding. Well, this this uh, whole thing is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, her, yeah, mom right. is uh, her mom is yeah. uh, right. I want her to watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I, have a, I have a question for everybody. There's word going around that the city of Rochester is going to outlaw cul-de-sacs. Yep, that's, that's, that's happening. Yep. yep. Well, I mean, the, the other word is that they're actually going to turn those properties over to the I mean, that's, they're going to become private streets. They're not going to be maintained. They're, sh they're just going to turn them over to the adjoining property owners, basically, for maintenance and snow plowing and everything. Well, they're 28. They have a 20, 28 million dollar budget deficit right now, which is amazing. So but why are call the sex more maintenance? I mean, outside of, I mean, I understand. Well, I think Rochester's perspective is that they don't serve anybody except for the property owners, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like we have it here where we have private roads and a number of mark call the sex. I think that's kind of what they're saying as well. It doesn't serve the public. It serves, you know, the people that live on it. I, I can't, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But you let them build it one time, how does that work? But, you know. I mean, I know myself living in a cold sack. It takes the guys a lot longer to clean that street in the winter. Right. You know, and yes, there is less traffic. It is more attractive to have a house in a cold sack especially with kids, but I can see the cost to the city. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you think you want to reconsider that here? I don't know. I just wanted to hear what I everybody think Linda, thought. Linda agrees. Why don't you, Linda? You think that'd be a good idea, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I push for a transportation plan to <laughs> prevent those. Well, I mean, I think if you were in a budget crisis, you would look at all options. And I mean, I, I can see that. The first step is saying no more. Well, and right. then the second step is, hey, you live on a private road, so we're going to turn it over to you guys, and you guys can create your own association and take care of it. I mean, I think to me, if there were people who who like, if you had all the people on a cul-de-sac who said, nope, we want this road, 
then maybe that'd be something to take a look at. Yeah. But I mean, trying to force somebody to do it, that's the hard part. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I'd rather have the city building that road, I'd rather have them maintaining it. I'm a taxpayer, I mean, even for the folks who live on the south end of town here, I mean, we get a lot of calls from Southport and we tell them, well, you're an association. I mean, in the fullness of time, the city will probably have to take that project on. You know, and, and hopefully none of us are on the Planning Commission when that happens, but <laughs> we know that that's going to be a, a substantial overhaul because a lot of those roads were built a little differently. And I'm not criticizing anybody because we've got some good developers, but, you know, it's just criticize. Uh, yes, very. very <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going <laughs> to criticize it, but <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be honest with you, my first day I was here, I took the tour <coughs> on a little mini school bus with, with Mark and the other candidates, and we went down there and we drove through there, and it was like, Oh my gosh! Like this is uh, th these are brand new houses that are being built on a road that's you know they're only five feet off of the road. It, you know you can't even park a car in the driveway. And it, it was built to make money. Well, sure. Right. That, that's what it was. Yeah. But it it's I've had to clear snow off of those roads. It's horrible. Yeah. It is just horrible. But we well, have stopped cul de sacs. We the city hasn't built any that we had since Seven and a Half Street. Sure. I mean, once we got done with all the places in Northwest and we did seven and a half street, we stopped because every other cul-de-sac is a private. Hmm. I mean, the one over on 12, Stock 12, that's private. And any other cul-de-sacs have been in an association since then. That's true. So yeah, I don't think the city would ever look at building the, the cul-de-sacs. No. But no, you know where the last one? Is that the one out behind the school? Is that the one you're talking about? Isn't that the last one? I think the last one was Seven and a Half Street, which is right by the Lutheran Church on Eighth, because first and second place had already been. I'm talking the one. Yeah, the one behind the football field. Behind the football field, Lampus. Oh, yeah, that one was just put in, but that was yeah. flatted a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the last one. It was. And, and that that's be because it had nowhere to go. Yeah. And, they didn't. and that one wasn't really built properly either. No. Because it's obviously not really a cul-de-sac. It's a mud hole, and we're working on that too. Yeah, I don't think anybody wanted to do that one up in <laughs> Cass and Meadows, but it just, there was nowhere else, no, th nothing else to do with that land. Living so you're right, that probably is the last one we did. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm just curious. Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly something we could take a look at. I'm, I'm glad to see the city of Cass is not in that kind of financial shape, so that's good. We're relying you on you to keep it. That way. <laughs> well, we're making good progress. <laughs> yeah. That beach house is gonna have to wait another year, Linda. So. <laughs> anyway. That's all I've got. Okay. Anything else, Shovel? Go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much.